Hello everyone, I'm Extra Cheesy 87 and this is Let's Play Legend of Heroes Trails in the Sky Part 37. Last time we made it to Zeiss, the fourth major city. I mean, I guess if you count Roland as a city, I don't. But basically, basically the third major city of the game we have made it to. Um, we, along the way, we met the girl Tita. Uh, Tida. I still haven't decided how I'm going to pronounce her name. Um, then we kind of explored the town a little bit, bought some items, got some sweet loot off screen. I redid our ornaments. Um, basically, uh, Estelle can heal people now. And she has a couple extra abilities. Like She has blue impact now and she knows diamond dust. Just like a, I think it's an I guess it's an AOE. Yeah, it's an, a small AOE water attack, and then our boy Joshua. So like I'm, I was a little conflicted because there's the scent ability, which I think is bad. It's enemies become aware of presence is the the side effect, but it allowed us to unlock um, this ability and this ability. Well, we actually already had this, but our setup wouldn't allow us to get it unless we use this ability. So I kind of figured out a little bit of the way orbits work um so it's like each one of these orbits has a little value and that like see like sit eagle eye gives you three like time quartz and two mirage quartz and that increases the like value and then when they reach a certain value and you unlock spells as much as I complained about like how the game doesn't tell you anything, in your bracer notebook it actually lists all the fucking magic spells and what you need to unlock them. So uh, I was I was a little little mad about learning that, not gonna lie, but uh, you know. Um, and then the different all the different types of quartz. So apparently there's only three tiers of them. Which I mean, I guess that makes sense if we're just now getting the tier two of some abilities. When we're about 60% of the way through the game. But yeah, they have all this stuff. And they, they kind of explain it somewhat. I, I don't know though, man. Let's just go with the guild. Basically, Joshua can shoot fire really good now. But also, enemies are going to attack us. Pardon us. Um, See, we're finally here, I see. Estelle, Joshua, welcome to Zeiss. Huh? You know us? I've already been briefed in your arrival from one Jean at the Ruan branch. A girl with chestnut hair tied in twin ponytails and a boy with black hair and amber eyes. That is you, is it not? I... okay... My name is Kalika? Kalika? Whatever. Zeiss welcomes your service. It is a pleasure to make your acquaintance. Uh, same here. The pleasure is ours. I know you've only just arrived, but I'd like you to proceed with the formalities of changing your affiliation. If you just sign these documents. That should do it. You are both now affiliates of the Zeiss Regional Guild. There are no urgent matters that must be seen to currently. You're free to check the bulletin board and work at your own place. Pace. It's kind of disappointing, but uh, hey, a little peace and quiet can be a good thing. Oh right, we had a question to ask. About Cassius, correct? She could read minds! Did Jean tell you about him too? The whole sordid matter. I'm sorry I'd have to say Cassie's not currently in the Zeiss branch. He only stops in every few months or so. Majesty's grandson, or maybe. Yo, he's probably back in Roulette chilling. You know? Happy to be free of us. I believe I might be able to provide you with a lead in another, in another matter. Please take this. Uh, attention, factory chief. It's a letter of introduction to the head of the Central Factory, one Mr. Murdoch. He is basically like the mayor of the Zeiss region. I don't know if we trust mayors, man. Is this in regard to the, what happened with the thingy? The stories of the mayor's residence painted as a very mysterious item. I'd suggest that you consult with the factory chief and see what he has to say. Wow, you've really got this all planned out. You have some kind of superpower, Kalika? My business is to provide support for bracers such as yourself. I simply decipher the intelligence to provide it. Yes, snooze fast. We really appreciate your assistance. Think nothing of it. I trust that you will uh, return to assistance in should a major incident occur. Okay, so we're going to the factory chief. First things first, what do we got? Temp librarian. 250 Mira? 
Is that a joke? Is that is that like some some uh? Is that like a joke? <laughs> you think I'm gonna waste my time with 250 Mira? What? And then there's a monster. Got it. Okay, so basically we're gonna go talk to the to the dude. Also, um, I learned in the options that you can make the mini map like rotate with you, as opposed to being like fixed north. Which I think will actually help a lot with my navigation issues. Because I basically just walk around by looking at the minimap. I don't actually look at Nacelle and Joshua. Um, I feel like there was something else I saw in the options. I think that was it, maybe. Although when we saw the retrial offset thing last video, which apparently, um, maybe that's why the game is so much harder for me. It's not actually the, the, the increase to hard. It was just when I played it originally, whenever I died, the stuff got easier. I don't know. How much money do we have left? We have no money. Like I was gonna say, we might buy some more consumables, but uh, we are po. We ain't got no money. Also, apparently, we already had a defense too, uh, because we have two of them now, so. Yeah, none of this other stuff really. Sleep. Oh, wait, okay, so what is, what is sense? Like, what's the value of sense? It is that. Like, could we get away with a, what you call it? Like, if we got an evade too, would that work? So that we wouldn't have to have Sint equipped? Or sleep? Sleep is less of a commitment. Well, we already have an impede. We could just check it with that, right? Um, does she have it equipped? Oh, she does have it equipped. Let's just remove it real quick. Would impede unlock it? It would not. Okay. Just checking. Wait, why does she have impede, actually? I can't see what ability it's adding. It has diamond dust, I think, yeah. Head to the welcome to the Central Factory. Can I help you? Oh, we're from the Bracer Guild. Uh, we're here to meet some dude. Estelle reached into her pouch, paused for dramatic effect, then flourished the introduction note to meet the factory chief. Joshua looked stoic and tried not to roll his eyes. I see. Just a moment, please. Keeping one airy eye on Estelle. Wary eye. Not a not an airy eye. Yes, yes, sir. Uh, the people from the Bracer Guild. They're really weird. Thank you for waiting. The Factory Chief Murdoch will see you now. His office is upstairs on the second floor. Okay, how do I get to the second floor? Uh, the stairs. Makes sense. What's up? Hey, I've been waiting for you two, Estelle and Joshua, right? Uh, yeah, it's nice to meet you, sir. Sorry to bar you, bother you at work like this. We're not borrowing him. I mean, we're borrowing his time, I guess. Nah, no, don't worry yourselves about that. The Bracer Guild and Cassie's in particular have done a great deal for me in the past. It would be rude of me not to welcome his children. Huh? You know, Dad, apparently Cassie's just fucking everybody in the entire world. I guess you might say that he was my benefactor. It's no exaggeration to say the Central Factory produces the finest orbits in the land. Naturally, the confrontations over our craft have never really stopped. Whenever we had a problem, we'd always contact the Roland branch and have them come over. I see. Oh, that explains all the business trips, then. <laughs> now my benefactor's kids come to visit me myself? Uh, themselves. So, uh, what can I do for you? I'm happy to help. It's kind of a long story. I ah, see. Well, then. Would you mind if I had a look at this orbit? Sure, no problem. Upon touching the orbit, it turned into a nuclear bomb and destroyed them all. Now, this certainly is an oddity. It's obviously made from modern materials, but the caliber isn't inscribed anywhere. Caliber? You mean the numbers that are carved into the orbit's frame? Exactly. It's almost unheard of for an orbit to be produced without them. 
That's not just in Lyreville either. Most other nations of the continent are the same way. It's been a tradition dating back to when orbits were first invented 50 years ago. I wonder how many times they're going to tell us that orbits were invented 50 years ago. I feel like that's at least the 10th time. Huh, you don't say. You're right. There are numbers right there. Crazy. You mean to say that you've never noticed all this time? Oh, you hush. But seriously, is that really that strange for one to have no caliber on it? It's pretty much a part of the production process, and that goes for any mobile factory. As if this were, uh, it's as if this were a prototype or something. If so, I'd like to imagine it wasn't made to entertain a birthday party to take my meaty. Probably opens a fucking black hole. So less with the sweet and awesome, more with the stabby hurt, you got it. Of course, I can't say for sure without looking inside. What is it? Well, I looked inside. <laughs> I can't find the maintenance cover. No, I need to really look at it. It has no seams in it at all. How the hell is this thing made? Huh, I don't see any way to check out the inside of it. Would it be possible to cut it open? That might work, yes, but I'd hate to just break something belonging to Cassie's like that. Maybe we should let the professor handle it. Alright, the one mentioned in the note. Yeah, you should be able to tell us something. There was a note that was included with the orbman. Please ask Professor R to do an analysis. You wouldn't happen to know who this Professor R is, would you? Well, let me think. From the letter R and the people that Cassius knew, it must be Professor Russell. I thought so. What do you mean you thought so? Who's Professor Russell? Wait, wait a second, how do you know this guy? I don't, but I know of him. He's known as the person who brought orbital technology to rival Librel in the first place. Yo, he must be pretty fucking old then. As I'm sure you know, orbits were invented by Professor Ed. Oh, of course, he doesn't know that. But Professor Russell was one of his disciples. Forty years ago, he brought the orbits and his knowledge back, and that's why Libro is a technologically advanced nation. You might say that he was the father of the orbital revolution. Wow, now that is impressive. And I had no idea that Dad knew anyone like that. Even so, it worries me a little that you'd be bringing in the old, uh, prof, uh, your... Let's try this again. Even so, it worries me a little that you'll be letting the old prof, uh, handle this orbit. We have no idea what it is, really. Well, how to put this, for good or ill, he's a certified genius. When he gets an idea of, uh, for a new invention in his head, there's just no telling what he'll do. Much like the time when he was developing the first orbital airship. <sighs> Uh, what's with that far-off look? I guess a lot's happened. I'm sure I'll be able to figure this thing out. Go find him and ask him about it. Can't hurt. Um, hold on a moment. Flip the switch. Testing, testing. Oh, good. Actually, I've been looking for you. Sorry to bother you, but can you come here? Alright, alright. I'll be waiting. Uh, did you just call the professor or something? Oh, no, no, no. He actually has a private workshop in town. He has all the latest technology at his disposal, so he can figure out something about- so I know he can figure out something about that thing. Wait, then who'd you call? His granddaughter. She works here at the factory. I'm sure the child will be happy to show you the way. The child? Um, excuse me? Hey, there she is. You. Oh, Stella and Joshua. You mean to know that you know each other? Yeah, we only just met a little while ago, though. So then I guess she's the professor's granddaughter? Exactly. Tita, I've been talking with the Stella Joshua here. I'd like for you to show them the way to your house. To see Grandpa? Okay, I will. I appreciate it. Oh, uh, yeah, if you learned anything new, I'd love for you to come back and told me. As an engineer, I'm extremely curious to know more about this. Sure thing. You'll excuse us, then. Yeah, this song officially bangs. Oh, uh, you're even the granddaughter of a famous professor? So no wonder you're so comfortable with ornaments. <laughs> Come on. I'm still studying under my grandpa. Oh, by the way, do you embarrass us have business with our grandpa? No, we just want to fucking see the dude. Uh, the situation's kind of complicated. We can explain everything once you see your grandfather. Southwest corner, off escalator, go straight until you reach the south entrance, turn to the west. Um, I'm just gonna check every house, basically. Oh man, it's got a bunch of floors. Man, it's got suddenly very tired. It's only 10 o'clock. It's not that late. 
Oh, oh man, pardon me. Pardon me. Does it go west? So I guess it's this. Just uh, got hit with the yawn alert. It's a pretty, pretty big home, in all honesty. This is my house. Wow, nice place. Professor Russell is here? No, I think he's in the workshop. Through this door. Yeah, this dude's gotta be ancient, right? I, I, come on, I have, oh my god, look at, what is, what the hell is he doing? I don't like, I don't like that position right there. Uh, okay, maybe this way. Mm. Ah! Uh, so this is the professor, dude, he is jerking it real hard. Uh, nice to meet you. My name is Estelle Bright of the Bracer Guild. I actually came to get your expert opinion on... Um... Got it! Ah, I did it! It's finally complete! That's right, who's the man? I'm the man! Yes, I should start testing it at once! Whoa! Dude, Estelle just got spun around. What the hell? Uh, goes into a trance when he's working. He doesn't really notice what's going on around him. I think he has finished with the device he's working on for the past few days. I see, he really is something. Yeah, he's something alright. What the fuck is that thing in there? Grandpa, there's some people here who need to talk to you. Huh? Oh, Tater, you're coming along at just the right time. I need your help with compiling the data on these tests. Um, but Grandpa, this new invention will actually check a biosensor's orbits and hydro facilities. It emits a unique orbital field. F I don't know, man. Yes, really, since I overstate my own accomplishments. Now, come on, we got testing to do. I don't think I'll ever pin down a voice for this dude. Yo, are we invisible? Hey, now. Never mind, Estelle. I think we should just let them. Uh, whoops. Hey, there, you with black hair. So he can see us. Who else? On the upstairs bookcase is a notebook titled Orbital Energy is Applied to Force Fields. Go get it. Go, be cool, be cool about it. Jump, jump. Wait, Joshua? Hey, young lady, with the antenna ha What? Antenna? Oh, no, you didn't. Quit farting around and make some coffee. Why should I have to make you coffee? I take it black, by the way. I want it clear as mud. Wait, what? Fine, whatever. All set, Grandpa. Just as fast as ever. Um, where are Estelle and Joshua? Who? Come to think of it, I do vaguely recall a couple of young folks. Murdoch sent along some fresh faces, I presume. Grandpa. They wound up as assistants. After many small but relatively harmless explosions and some singeing of the eyebrows, the day gave way to evening. <laughs> Sorry about all that, I just assumed you were both new employees at the Central Factory, so it's only natural that you wound up being drafted as assistants. There's no laughing matter. Especially since the only thing you had me helping with was making coffee. Girls can make metal parts together too, old man. Relax, still, we got some valuable experience out of the deal in the end. Did we really, though? Well, now, you're a bright lad then, aren't you? Dude, Joshua's too smart for his own good. Want to give up this bracer nonsense to start up in the field of orbital engineering? I'm really sorry, guys. I guess I, was caught up in the, I, guess I got caught up in the moment, too. Uh, you don't need to apologize, sweetie. But I thought the father of the global revolution was going to be some really amazing man. Not some old fart with attention deficit issues. <laughs> Please, you're too kind. Moving on, so I'm being paid to visit by the children of Cassius. That's quite the surprise. Uh, so do you really know our dad? Yeah, from way back when. I've known him since his army days, some 20 years or so ago. I've met him too. What? He had a really nice mustache. Yeah, that's him. Well, I don't know if I'd call it nice as much as suspicious looking. But if he's known dad for that long, it looks like we'll be safe and trusting you know what with Pressel Russell after all. What are you talking about? And what is this you wanted me to help, wanted my help with? 
man, they must get pretty tired of doing the Black Orbit explanation by now. It's like the fourth time they've done it. Wow, a pitch black orbit. Yeah, most intriguing. It would no inscribed caliber it seems. Look at that frame too. Yo, don't start jerking it, man. You push the blade's edge against the outer shell of the orbit. Well, what are you doing? It's a special alloy steel color cutter. Just as I thought. Here, take a look. There's not even a scratch. The frame is made from some type of metal that I've never before encountered. Open it up for closer look is gonna take quite the it's gonna be quite the task. That's just crazy. If we can't find some way to open it, we'll be right back at square one. Well, I can certainly spend some time on trying. But first, I think that maybe we should put it under some measurement scan. Oh what now? You can gauge orbital energy activity in real time. You're making my head hurt with your techno babble. Just tell me what the th using the thing will accomplish. Uh It'll do stuff, got it. And that should give us a major clue. Yeah, sure, nerds. Shouldn't we have- didn't they say it was already evening? Oh, man. I had to, yeah, I definitely need to- this could be the last video for today. I don't know why I just got so tired all of a sudden. What is up with these two? Now I see where she gets it. Granted, I mean, how many videos have I recorded today? Six? Seven? I think it's the seventh video today. So, it's a pretty decent day. Not quite as much as I wanted to. I really wanted to record a lot of this game today. But as I mentioned in the last video, just the, the salt really uh, impeded that, and plus I got caught up doing a few other little things. Still, if you put the orbit on the stand, we'll basically finish this scene and then stop, or we'll play until we get to save, basically. Oh man. Black Orbit, so that's going to be the official name after all. Using it officially is so boring and simple. Why don't I call it something cool like Dark Thingy of Impending Doom, yo, Estelle? We're like a fucking, we got the same wavelength right now. Anything longer than Black Orbit would just be annoying to say. Oh, look at her, she's all anxious to start. Uh oh. Tita, if you'll access this, this do the thing. Now my tongue isn't working. Yo, it's playing the serious music. Putting all measuring equipment on standby. Roger. Done. All measuring equipment is calibrated. Okay, from here on out is the real deal. Since no direct input or output was detected, all we can measure all we can do is measure the central circuit. That's too complicated, I can't read it. My brain is officially in the process of shutting down. I get it, it's putting a major strain on this crystal circuit. But they're kinda weird. Uh, the taco meteor needle shaking like crazy. Dude, this is so fucking loud. It's like actually gonna drive me insane. Whoa, it's like doing its glowy thing. What's going on here? It's the same black light as from before. Yo, is it gonna turn all the electricity off? Well, I hope everybody uh, had saved their video games before the power went out. Gr Grandpa, it won't take much more of this. We have to shove it at all. Don't you dare. Just a little longer and we'll have something. Wait a second, all the lights in town are going out. What? But we have no choice than terminating the experiment. Yo, I think it's gonna open a fucking black hole and kill us all. They're back on. 
Let's see the readout. Nothing. Didn't record anything. The only thing that kept working was the scanner which the Black Orbit sat on, but even then, well, as for everything else... Yo, they're gonna burn the witch if we keep messing with their power like this. All the lights are back on like nothing happened. There's still a lot of people panicking, though. What the hell was all that? That was what I would dub the Orbal Shutdown Phenomenon. The what down? So the Black Orbit did this? So it's like an EMP? It's an EMP Orbit? I would never have dared to guess the effect would be so extensive. Hmm, there's definitely more to this than I expected. Interesting, most interesting indeed. <laughs> Only you would think that causing a blackout over an entire city is interesting. Ah, Murdoch, just the man I wanted to see. This feeling is not mutual. Every single time you invent something, it means trouble for me. What the hell are you up to that would cause all the power downtown to go out? Uh, it's the Black Orbit and it caused this? Oh, whoops. I didn't mean to skip that. Uh, I'm, I can't really. I mean, I can talk loud, but I'm not going to because it's already 10 in the morning. Oh, not 10 in the morning. It's 10 at night, which isn't really that late, but I'm a considerate neighbor, so I'm going to try and be quiet for the rest of the video. Also, I'm tired. That's it? They're just okay again? Uh, are they always like this? This is so embarrassing. And so the first day in Zeiss kept everyone busy. Due to how late it was, Estelle and Joshua stayed at the lab for the night. Did they get to save their game at the lab tonight? Man, yesterday was such a crazy day. I was surprised enough at the town that I wasn't really expecting me to deal with anything like that. No kidding. But back on the subject of the Black Orbit, it's much more powerful than I've ever imagined. What's the prof gonna do now that his equipment's gone all kerflui? Kerflui. Yo, what the fuck is that rabbit up there? I think it's terrifying. Good morning, quite a big day yesterday. <laughs> no kidding. You guys sleep okay? Uh, other than the rabbit, they gave me nightmares. Also, what is what do you mean like babies? Babies are notorious for not sleeping well. He said something about how he's gonna expose all the Black Orbit secrets. Wow, looks like getting roared at over and over by the factory chief yesterday they didn't even put a dent in it. Oh, it's fine, really. Grandpa's investigating out of pure curiosity more than anything. I should go to the factory myself once I'm done with breakfast. What do you plan to do? Um, we'll be coming with- wait, what? Maybe there's something we can do to help. Well, then you can come with me. Almost forgot about the soup. Just a second, you two. I'll bring you breakfast as soon as I make sure it's edible and not on fire. Why would the soup be on fire? Estelle, you can't kidnap the child. She could be like a pet, cheering us up when we're feeling down. Uh, that's very creepy, Estelle. She's gonna like put her at the bottom of a well. You know, lotion on the skin and all that. Before we do that, I'd like to check in at the guild. I think it might be best to report on what happened yesterday, just to be on the safe side. Should we pop into the guild? Nah, let's let's go ahead and end it. Well, okay, here's what I'll check. Will it let us actually like leave and go fight monsters? It will not. Okay, well never mind. Oh, cause I was thinking maybe in between videos I could do a tiny bit of side questing, but eh, we'll we'll do that sometime later. I'm too tired to continue. Um Next video, we'll pop into the Bracer Guild and see what's going on with the, uh, the old and black orb mint. I'm Extra Cheesy 87. Stay tuned for the next part, and bye, guys.